today we will try to demo mills and stars and it's right there see how i'm changing things around i was like i didn't show the quilt i just thought well let's just put it in a de design wall you know and with that said right there i loved it that all right came to me the other day and he said here teresa use this i said oh that Say, so, well, use whatever you want, you know. <laughs> so I did use this bundle of headquarters to create this. And I think it kind of like did a semi-modern thing. And then Stephanie did brought us this one too, which we also have yardish, you know, on it. And by the way, if you don't like to buy fit, um, bundles like this, I just did a, a five and a half inch strip too, you know? And I, I have to show here because I really love what uh, we pick for the back end and it really, it really makes it, you know, neat. And then look at this. Um, I thought uh, Judy how to do this little pocket for your label. I, we never signed really, you know, it's just like doing a program and never go back and sign it. So Judy always does this and I think it's really nice because sometimes it takes us, she puts her name with a marker and the date. And I think because often I can't like remember who made the quilt, but I certainly not gonna remember who quilted it. Um, we do have two ladies that quilt for us mostly. Eleanor says that we don't quilt, we quilt with our credit card. So <laughs> I said, yeah, the company credit card. <laughs> um, but this one, I was, it, it came this morning, believe it or not. Our Ryan, our Ryan chipped it two days ago to be quilted. <laughs> and I say, to Escondido? Yes, Teresa. And I say, okay. And so he shipped it and got that. But I looked at it and how unique this, this quilting can be done within your sewing machine. It's very, very pretty and modern. And these, I, I feel like you can just go across, up and down, you know, a half an inch like what she did, but you can even do a little bit bigger to create that pia piano key. Don't you agree? Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, Brenda comes this morning and I couldn't wait to see this. Um, she brought this, oops, I supposed to stay right here. Isn't that really pretty with two colors? It's, I just think it's really nice. And I think she did really good job and she said she did not know where to press and how to press, but I think she did a really good job. We will show you that technique about how to press. Um, AccuQuilt, I think they're always said for you to open your seams. And I think that's just the easiest way to go. I like to press to one direction. It's nothing is wrong to open your seams at all. But I feel like when two different things, when you press um, your seams to one side or another, I think it's more secure your seams instead when you open your seams it can totally open up a lot easier you know and then another thing is when you press up or down then they kind of like lock helps you lock in your seams and i think mostly i for me i think that's what it, I, you will see me demoing on mostly okay then i i love this quilt so i'm going to just go ahead and put it right here really think it's cute. Thank you, Brenda, for sharing. <laughs> I think it's really pretty. There we go. Okay. And um, so we all know that, that this is what we're going to be demoing on it. Okay. And you can see that here, the pattern, it shows two different backgrounds. But right now, I'm going to start with just one background. Okay, then later eventually, and then I kind of like following this picture in the back of the package, okay? And you all got a pattern with, for this, okay? That said, there is our die. Oh, you wanna see all that marks I put in my die already? This one, I decided, you know, it's so many curves, then I just wanted to see 
have a little where to go and, uh, and put my pieces on it. I used to draw with pen, but I thought when I did this tape, see, it's so easy that you can remove it and do other things, okay? So with that said, I did cut like how your pattern said, um, a seven inch strip, and then you cut it into um, a seven by eight. I decided to put them both of the squares right side up, okay? You cannot have everything right side up here because they're, if you have them always right side up, even though they're two, they didn't really put a mirror image. Eventually it's the same piece, you just flip it over, okay? So in order to have for right and left for your pattern, you need to make sure that you have uh, wrong side up and then right side up. And by me folding it this way, I have the, the two of it, okay? So, like I say, I even made myself a note what size is straight to cut in this little tape that I put. And then I'm just gonna line it up right there and see, it, I, I'm not struggling like, oh my gosh, it's a quarter of an inch away or not, you know? And then, um, these I already cut a few, you could tell. In this part, um, you're gonna go, you're gonna go up and down this way to save fabric, okay? It's to save fabric, and I'm gonna show you in a few cuts, so. Yeah? So right here, I'm gonna uh, line it up right in that line that I did because I needed it. Oh, and I'm so big because I already don't have it straight here, but see, I can see Eric, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so I can cover it, and I will just do this, cover it up, and then because I have a little tail of a fabric, you can have more, but I decided just to push the die on, on one side, wherever the other side is my fabric, and then I just put my fabric right, kind of like bundle up in the side, okay? Keep it to, as together as you can because you're gonna lay your cut again. And there you go. <clears throat> there you go. There is your background, okay? And then see how I'm gonna tell, this is the straight up grain. And, and then at first I thought, oh, they put in for us to use mirror image, but it's, and then this is the straight up grain. I'm turning it over and it's the same, the same thing. So, but for me to get two, I'm gonna, and you know, of course I pick a background that you hardly can see it, but this is right side up, and then one, two, it's right side up. Then it goes to the other side. Let me see. It's so hard to see that. There, 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 there is the, the other side of the kite. Okay, there we go. And then this is the right side. Okay. And then this one comes right out. Okay. Then Got this little pile going. Now, this is when you're gonna turn it over to the wider part because you have wider right here, see? You just turn it over. Making sure that you save. And I will put another background right here. Okay. Now it's on the other side. There we go. Move it out. If you get a little thread, I always keep the scissors right behind. So there is right side up. 
again. Then turn it over. And there, there, and there is your other one. And then you just keep going that, that way, turn it over and so on. I'm not gonna cut anymore, I don't need any more. I, you can flip it over again, and then now then if I don't, I don't use background, you just can use a, just um, a small mat, okay? To cut it and run it through. That saves you blades of your other pieces, okay? Okay, let's go and lay it out up here. <coughs> Um, I used four layers, so you know, just because I had uh, four fabrics, and then right here, you, got, you see, I already had my other colors um, together here. And this time, I'm gonna separate all my colors, okay? I, I flip it over. Oh yes, what is that question? Okay, on the pattern for the <laughs> white background, cutting with the AccuQuilt machine, it doesn't say anything about Z folding, so you have front up, back up and, and front up, you know what I mean? Oh. It, it doesn't say that. When I, I was working with the solids, it didn't matter. I, I didn't have to have a, a, right, a, a front up and a front down. But is that what you're saying, the white background, the first set of cutting instructions? It needs to be folded because it's the same cut. It needs to be right sides together or wrong sides together. It doesn't matter. And you know what, Brenda? I think it's in the last page that I put in there. Oh. Okay? Okay. Yes. Uh, fan folded is in um, number fabric color number three. It says cut one, six, and three quarters by eight. They change it a little bit, the measurement there, and it says fin folded rectangular. So it says that. And yes, in the pattern, I don't think it says anything. Thanks for asking. Um, also, this is the tape I use, and I, it was so easy to mark with a little pen on it. Just wanted to show you that. <clears throat> okay, with that said, we just gonna, I only going to do since um, the, the picture in there, it shows that your pictures with purple and pink, I just gonna do your black with purple and pink. And my other ones, I'm just gonna put them aside. Okay, there you go. And there, there is that. And there is your straight up grain, and this is your straight up grain. You can like can see if you move a little bit your fabric, which one is of the bias, you know? And you know what? I unsew it two different times. So I do that same thing. I say, darn, I think I turned it over and did something like this. And then, the, and then after I sew it, you could see the black kind of like wonky. So I say, I didn't do this right, you know? So put your strain of grain in the top like this, okay? Now we move this aside and I'm going to sew my right side, like it says right there. I have my machine set up in the quarter of an inch. I have my foot has a quarter of an inch. But now that I use this, it really, I figure my needle is already set there. So I really line up with this edge feed dog line right here on the other side. That's a quarter of an inch seam guide right here. And oops, I'm gonna do that. I wish I had a lot of jokes to tell you, but I don't. Oh yeah, did I ever tell you what happened with Eleanor? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I totally missed it. I'm sorry. She's not here. With two major reasons. She's uh, snowing. She can't get out of the house. But that's the main reason is that she unfortunately took a, a, a fall on her own sewing room. And she tried to catch herself and she broke her wrist. So that's, that's where she is and I'm, that's, that's just so unfortunate. You know what, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna just do this, how about that? In this particular step, you press towards your background or to your triangle, let's say, because if you use two colors, you won't notice that. I don't always like to finger, print, uh, finger press. I don't like to have folds in there, okay? And I use steam on the end. And if I use way too much steam, especially if it's really fine fabric, I like to set there to cool off a little bit instead of me picking it up when it's so hot, okay? And that destroys your fabric. And I just do it. Okay, now we go back and now we put this aside and we're going to use the left hand side of it. And you know yesterday when I was making this step, I, this is what I'm doing. I didn't like to see this, this seam here over, so I'm going to flip it over and sew it this way. Okay, with my background in on top. So let me let's do it again. I didn't want it started with this point where I already saw it. So what I did and didn't want to make a mistake, I just flip it over this way. Got it? And then I just put my white on top again. Okay. This is a lot faster than doing rotary cutter, isn't it? But I still like to do a little rotary cutter. It's not a big thing, okay? There you go. Done with this, I'm gonna put it aside. There. I always like to use a jump scrap. Now this time we are going to press towards the kite, if you want to call it, or towards your color. Okay? Early the, the first one we press towards that tri that triangle, the background. And it sits in there, yes, it sits in the pattern, okay? Um, set the seam, and I'm so used to finger press because I don't like to have those folds, okay? Now, if you don't have nails, uh, long nails like me, that helps me a lot. I found that this purple thing works so good. I just, I couldn't believe it. It took me a long time to use it, but I feel like it presses really well, a finger press, you know? And also, it measures your seams. Look at this. That's a quarter of an inch. And I, I know that I've been told forever about it, but I never use it until I tell some people, and it's just a couple of dollars or so. So I just like that little tool a lot, okay? Remember I told you earlier, and I'm gonna lay it out here and see if you can tell the difference. This is the straight of the grain right here. This is the, uh, and you can tell if you want it really pull it a little bit. This is the straight of grain, it doesn't pull. 
okay? And this is the ones that Brenda said, that's what it needs to be outside. And remember I told you earlier that I answered about two different times yesterday when I was doing my technique and I say, I turn it over and instead I did this and see how it, okay, let me just show you how, how, how kind of makes it goes the opposite direction. So it's not really straight, see it? It's not gonna be straight on you, okay? That's a good, so yes, it is very important the straight of grain, uh, straight of grain to be on the top, okay? And, and it's easy and, it, and we think it doesn't matter because it's background that we can use it, but you don't even know until you sew it that you just go, oh, I did it again. All right, so here we have our to, um, two of each colors, so to mix and mix your colors. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just sew them like this, okay? And now this is when you're gonna see, oh, you wanna see the wrong side? See how they, they're pressed one and out, okay? So now when I come back and flip and see how everything matches, see this seam is going up and this down, okay? And I'm just amazed that everything does lock out really well. In the end, sometimes when you sew in your quarter of an inch, you tend to this come wonky to either less or too much, but this is your point that you should finish. And fed, this is, it looks like it's more, but it's just a quarter of an inch, see? It's from here to here, it is a quarter of an inch. Do you see it? It looks like it's because of the angle, but that's that's what we're gonna do. Oops, there we go. Almost there, can you believe it? It's almost the whole time. Okay, you take it again and you press. Open and press to that. Flip it over, and that is your start. Let's see. There is your star. See, we had two alike, and then you just flip it, and you have your two. Okay. Mm, sorry. That's a piece here, and then you just make your square here together. See, I like this the, to line up my quarter of an inch heat and I think it really helped me stay in instead of me going back and forth with this. So I just line it up here in my quarter of an inch and my saw straight. Seams locks right there and seams will be locking right here too, okay? <clears throat> Then we're gonna remove a couple of stitches right here. These stitches, the straight stitches, we're gonna remove them. 
there, flip it over and remove the other side. There. Then you kind of like give them a little push so they open up and you create your four patch right there. Sometimes if it doesn't want to create, that means that you need to remove one more little stitch there, you know. There, there. And now, what are you going to do? You're just going to go clockwise and press it, okay? And we'll see how they match out right there in the center. <laughs> If not, I'm just going to toss it over the bag. <laughs> it sounds like good? Yes. Okay. There you go. Okay. Then I do it from the uh, front. And there it is. And there it is your square. Okay. And there is your back. Okay. Okay. Well, um, yeah, see, I have a few here, and that's where you could tell that um, I did uh, I did just different colors, but I just wanted to show you that, yeah, they eventually see if it's going to lock when you put them together, you know. See the seams going in different directions? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. There is the back of it. And we were trying to play with other options, which I'm so happy that Brenda brought the two colors. Um, and I was making something with the two colors, but Stephanie came and she even gave me more ideas. So I'm gonna just let Stephanie talk to you about this colorful things that she really is a modern person. <laughs> do you want me to hold it for you? What would you like me to do? Um, you want to put it on the design? Sure. Talk, talk to them. So we, my taste is a little more modern. These are very traditional, but I do still like it. But I was playing with Teresa yesterday, and I had some some different ideas for maybe a table runner because sometimes I don't want to make a whole quilt. So we chose some free spirit fabrics, a little bit more um, graphic and a little more modern. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put them up and, and let's work through my idea and see what we think it looks like. I'm gonna hold. You're gonna hold these. those for me. I'll hold and it for you. This one. Yes, you hold it. I'll take these. All right. Okay. So here's our block, and we did kind of the two color background, but it's prints, so it's got a little different look to it. And when when I started playing with these, I saw this secondary design with the black and white pop out. So I started thinking, well, I could do that. I could spin them and make a little table topper, but that didn't really speak to me too much. So I really wanted to play with this. So we're doing this and then let me put one more. So because I like my table runners to have that little shape, I was playing with this idea. So how I could um, continue this look, but give it that triangle shape at the bottom. So Teresa gave me, let's try this one first. This was our first one. She asked me to cut her a she triangle. Asked, a triangle. So <laughs> we're playing with the colors, right? So we did this and I thought, well, I don't know if I love it. Let me try a different one. That's why you, she threw it away already. <laughs> <laughs> she threw it away, okay. Stephanie. So here's hmm. what really spoke to me. I will. One second. Let me get the other one on so you can get my full idea. Okay. So this is what my brain, okay. my brain saw this continuing. And now I want to see this kind of being a floating idea. So now she cut me some, some strips I'll, I'll of white. I'll put it on for you. Okay. Um, and another thing, I won't, before I forget, I want to let tell you that that square was cut with our, our background. That it was seven inch square. I just cut a square at seven inch and cut it in half. It's a little bit bigger, but it's best to be a little bit bigger and you can trim it off. Do you? Okay, yep. so that's what I use. And so then okay. my brain wants to see these floating more. So then I had Teresa it. kind of cut me the white. This is exactly what I pictured, by the way. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 
What do you think? And see, um, and then your background, I uh, will just have one here, but you can visual what's going to happen here, right? So that's what she. And then her idea of binding, Stephanie, is? So for binding, I wanted to repeat that multicolor. So I had a couple of options, which I haven't really auditioned yet. One is to add a little border of this to give it more oomph, because I really do like all the colors here. Or just do the binding in it and just bring this back out to the outside. I'm going to just show you, because I, it, this is too wide, obviously, but right? Uh, but this was cut for my points, but you can just additional for you. I like it. Yeah. You like it? What do you think? Should I put it together? Yeah. All right, okay. Stephanie, you're going to put it together right. and show Thank them you. 12. Thank you, Stephanie. I will show you, not last for the least, what Eleanor sent me with her son. Say, Teresa, I have some for you. And she sent it, and I said, well, I don't have anything else to do, technique or anything. I said, oh, well, do whatever you can with it. And then yesterday, after Stephanie came, because we kind of like want to do different layouts and so on, I said, you know, it will have to look very pretty in point. So what I did, this is what she sent me. What um, I just kind of like put them on point. Her block. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, it was three, three. Mm, no, there, 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 there. There you go. I think. Yeah, there. Front. On point. That one here. I think I should move that in. What do you think? There or there? What do you think? Well, yeah. there is something like that, right? Yeah. And then I say, oh, I'm going to have to figure it out, the side triangles and corners. But what I did instead for the side triangles, I unsaw one of her blocks. I unsaw one of her blocks because I say it has to be the same size because it goes there and look at this. Isn't it pretty? Do you think she would like it if I sew it together for her? I don't know, but I really kind of like this. And I didn't have a chance to do anything else, but I say I like that as a little topper or so on. But then come and do corners here. And I say, oh gosh, I still have to figure out corners. What am I going to do? You know? <laughs> But then also we can finish like this. In fact, you know what I can show you right here, how a corner will be like. Obviously, I'm not going to put blue. Don't think I'm going to put a blue corners. But because I have that half triangle right there, see how it could be a square. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then let me take one from Stephanie so you can see that. See, it's in another square here. Mm -hmm. And that's the size, so it's going to be a little square. And you can make it as big as you can. I'm thinking to do background and then like what Stephanie says, it's just a small um, white border. But I also think about in the binding to do Rick Rock. What do you think? Oh, yeah. That's so Eleanor, don't you think? Yeah. I don't know. I might just surprise her and see what she likes. But yeah, she sent me those for me to uh, do whatever I want. And I think, I think she'd be happy. And I think it'd be so Eleanor and something different. Um, let me see. I did have a little, I, we've been, I've been using this method. Let me move that out of the way. I've been using this method of um, calculating side and corner triangles since Loretta's time. Do you remember Loretta? Yes, I do. Who else remembers Loretta? Loretta was, I learned from Loretta Smith. She was a little scary at first with me because I would ask her a question when I first taking her classes, and she said, look the pattern. And she'd be sitting in the corner. <laughs> she said that to me, <laughs> and then we, look the pattern, and then you can ask me, which I think that's a really good teacher, but I remember here. She worked here in the art department for a little while, and she was a, a, a school teacher, right, for many years, I'm, I'm not sure. But I will say I learned a lot of tricks from Loretta. Anyway, I still says what, um, this is an example, my little sticky notes is for my, for this one, so you know. Let me see my calculator in case I need it. 
Um, like what basically what you're going to do to do your side in any given black sides, but and here she has the 10 inch. I, because I choose to do a little sticky note with that eight inch, because that's how big this is finished at eight. That's why I just wanted to show you. Then what do you do that you, um, um, you multiply the, um, your finished sides in for 1.414, okay? And then you get a result, and then you add a 1.25, and then whatever you finish with that, you you kind of like get that size of black, or you always, quilting a day always goes a little bit bigger. Me, for me, sometimes I go, if it's so close to, like right here is to, um, 12 and a half, I might cut it 12 and a half. But if you feel like, oh my gosh, my seams might be a little bit big or so, uh, smaller or so on, I would go much bigger and do 12.75. That would, that would be your size of it, okay? And see, right here, 12 and 3 quarters square for if basically the bottom line, you don't, if you don't want to hit all this math, you basically you need 12 and 3 quarters square for your side. And at that time when you have that 12 and 3 quarters, you cut it twice. And then you put it in the, in the side triangles. And the reason we cut it twice is because this is not in the bias, okay? And the corners, we do the same thing, but at this time you multiply, excuse me, you divide it, divide the same number, and then you add 8 point, uh, 0.875, and the finish a square right here, it's six and three fourths. And after I cut it with a seven inch square, and I say, how perfect, I knew it's a little bit bigger, so that totally clarified to me that this works really well. Okay, so all you need to know really is that you need 12 and 3 fourths for your side triangles and 6 and 3 fourths for your corners, and your corner you only cut it once. Okay? Oh, yeah, I was telling Eric this morning, and I said oh, I was going to do a little demo for you, but I say no, I don't want to confuse you. But if you don't have AccuQuilt or the size to do this, I hope oh, I. Look this pattern and this reminds me so much of these uh, of these points. This is Kylie Sky Ruler. And then basically you just do a five inch uh, it's a five inch square and you cut this uh, on it. And there is very similar. Except the Kylie Sky, your points, um, your points are in. See? See how close that is? So for anyone, if they wanted to practice this, so we have these two things, okay? Well, thank you so much, and I hope you learned something. I hope I help you, okay? <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>